Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava and today I have a Q&A to celebrate five years of being on booktube. So it's been five years. I'm honestly shocked. I feel like I've been on here for forever, but five years sounds like a lot. <laughs> I first started my channel on July 2nd of 2017. I started with the booktube newbie tag like many other people. That video is still live if you want to go watch it. I don't recommend. Um, I was very awkward. Um, basically screaming into the camera, did not know how to talk to it. <laughs> and I didn't know where to put my setup. So my phone was set up on my bed while I was sitting on my bed. So the camera is constantly shaking. It's very cringy to me. My first year on booktube wasn't my favorite thing ever to look back on at least just because I, I can see myself a little lost in what I wanted to do with my channel. I was not solidified in what I wanted to do and what niche I wanted to be a part of. Um, I was kind of like all over the place. I was at first kind of like a YA channel and then I grew to the what I am now, my romance, my romance loving, you know? I also just thought like I've grown up. I've been like, I'm five years older than when I first started. That's crazy. Like 18 Avery to 23 year old Avery. Wow, wow. <laughs> um, a lot can change in five years. Um, a lot has changed in five years. So I just want to thank all of you for being such amazing viewers, whether you've been a subscriber of mine from day one, from that horrid <laughs> booktube newbie tag, or if you subscribed literally today. I love you. Thank you for watching any of my videos. Thank you all so much for five years. I really appreciate it. So I thought that a great way to celebrate five years would be to do a Q&A. If you would have followed my Instagram a couple weeks ago, I posted a giveaway on there for my five year anniversary that was only open for like 24 hours. The way you entered the giveaway was by commenting on that post with a question for my Q&A. And so we're gonna be answering these questions. And at the end of the video, I'm going to be spinning a spinner wheel um, and choosing the winner of the giveaway. I'm going to be gifting them a book off of their Amazon wish list under $15. Um, and then I'm also gonna be sending them three of my graphically designed bookmarks. So stay tuned for the end of the video to see who won that giveaway. But without further ado, let's get into these questions. First one that I have is, what are your tips for those who want to start their own booktube channel or entrepreneurship tips? I can't speak, I'm so sorry or entrepreneur tips in general. The first thing that I'm going to recommend is just to do it. If you're thinking about it, if you think you might wanna do it, just do it, go for it. I know that you might not know everything about everything about making a YouTube video, um, but there's plenty of tutorials online on what kind of equipment to buy. If you don't, you don't need equipment, by the way, I've been filming on my phone for five years. You don't need a special camera. There's like tutorials on, I have one on how to make a booktube thumbnail because I know that some people didn't know how to do that. So that like hindered them to make a booktube channel. So like, just like little things like that, like don't be scared. There's always a tutorial, tutorial. There's always a tutorial or a how-to video for anything you could probably think of on the internet. If you're nervous about it and don't think you have all the skills to do everything, trust me, you do. It's not that hard to just click record and talk to a camera. I know that some people are afraid or awkward to talk to a camera. I totally understand that's how I was at the beginning, but you get used to it. So don't worry about that. <laughs> I also recommend commenting a lot on other channels that are similar to your own, even if they're way bigger than you and you'd never think that you'd be friends with them. It doesn't matter if they're way bigger than you. There are so many people here on booktube who like who don't care about numbers and will be friends with you because you're a genuine, amazing person who has great taste in books. So like, don't let numbers affect you from commenting on other people's videos. And then also, I really just recommend making friends on here. Um, that was like my favorite thing. That's been my favorite thing about making a booktube channel is the friendships that I've made. And so one of the things that I did when I first started booktube, when I didn't have any friends, when I wasn't in my niche of romance tube, um, actually I've made some of the friends, some of the friends that I made at the beginning of my YouTube journey are still my friends now. And this is how I became friends with them. Okay. What I used to do like once a week was go on YouTube, you go in the search bar and you search booktube newbie tag. You search that and then there's like a restrict, there's like a button you can also click after you search that for, uh, to narrow down your search. So I would click on posted this week. So I, it would pull up all of the booktube newbie tag videos that were posted that week. And I'd click on some of the ones that I thought would vibe well with me. So like pictures on the thumbnail of books that I loved, you know, and watch their videos and comment on them. 
and comment on their videos, follow them on other social medias if their book tastes aligned with mine. And then we get to chatting and become friends. I know that's how I became close friends with my friend Ashley from Ash Art Books. We started a channel like around the same time and we're still friends now. So if you wanna make friends, that's a great way to make friends other than just commenting on um, your favorite booktubers. Um, if you wanna make like really close friends with people who are starting at the same time as you, I really recommend doing that. Next question is favorite moments you've had on booktube or captured in any of your videos. Thank you so much, Christy, for asking me this. First is, of course, meeting some of my bookish friends in person in Atlanta. I have a video for that, link down below if you wanna check it out. I loved meeting all of them in person. It was so sweet, definitely a core memory of mine. I have a video of capturing me hitting 1K and I was completely shocked. Um, so <laughs> that is up for your viewing pleasure. And then one that, that, I don't know, is very interesting, an interesting take on this is, my review of this book in a vlog. Okay, so I read All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover in a reading vlog that I did, I think in 2019, I wanna say. I talked about how I felt about this book and what was going on in my life during that time. I was crying, very emotional. I feel like it was the first time I was really vulnerable on camera and that response from that from my friends in the comments like showed me like it's okay to be vulnerable online you do not have to be happy go lucky put this fake smile on your face for every video that you film you are you and you cry sometimes and you're emotional and you're vulnerable and that's okay to put on camera i don't know that moment kind of like sticks in my brain a lot so yeah rachel my lovely friend rachel asked me what are your favorite videos to film slash edit for filming Anything to do with my favorite authors, honestly, where I can gush about them. For example, like my Ice Planet Barbarian breakdown video. I loved filming that, um, talking about everything IPB, Ruby Dixon related. I did like a Tiffany Roberts vlog. I love just gushing about my favorite authors. For editing though, those are not my favorite things to edit. The Ruby Dixon one is probably one of my least favorite to edit because there were so many book pictures I had to put in that video. <laughs> so I would say my favorite books to edit are like book hauls because I don't have to put in really anything extra. I can just edit the video and be done because you don't have to put in any of the pictures on the screen. My lovely friend Spirit asked me what my favorite childhood friends to lovers romance is. I would probably, I have two, I can pick just one. Uh, so I have The Fake King's Curse by Jamie Schlosser, a fantasy romance that is just so good. That's dealing with faded mates and fae and royalty and it's just so good. I really recommend it. And then another fantasy romance is A Touch of Stone and Snow by Mila Vane. The second book to A Heart of Blood and Ashes. These two are childhood friends and then one, the woman in this situation gets ostracized from her village or her, or basically her like town of people. Um, and she's scarred now. And then her childhood best friend who she's always been in love with, he's been in love with her. They've kind of like been waiting, saving their firsts for their best friend because they know that they are destined to be together. Both of them have waited for each other and he goes and searches for her and it is, it's so good. I love this one too. Keely, hi Keely, asked me if you could read a book for the first time again, what would it be? I feel like it's gotta be Radiance by Grace Raven. It's my favorite romance book of all time. Um, Just because I know this book by heart by now, like I know the ins and outs, every single scene could probably verbatim word for word read this book from memory for you. And so I feel like it would just be an amazing experience to read this book all over again and experience the love for the first time because it's just, it's so good. McKay asked me um, who my favorite IPB couple is. So I just planned a barbarian couple. I love this question. Thank you, McKay. Um, mine is Beck and Ellie. <laughs> this is book number 13 in the series. So you got a ways to go to get to this one, um, but I really recommend it. It's so good because Beck's redemption story in here is amazing. And Ellie is one of my favorite characters of all time. I honestly love a good damaged heroine that like becomes her own person. Like if that makes sense. So Ellie was abducted when she was really young by aliens. So she's been an alien slave for so long. They end up going to the ice planet. Beck and her end up being mates and she is terrified of him because he's this giant alien man and he has to learn to become this like more gentle man. Um, you've read about him in the previous books, how he wasn't that most of the time. And so he will do anything for his mate and he realizes how amazing this tiny little woman is. And it is so stinking cute. I love Beck and Ellie so much. They're definitely my favorite couple. Victoria asked me, what is one thing you would change about booktube? Now, Victoria, <laughs> this question was so hard, okay? I don't know if I would honestly like, 
change anything about booktube in general i might obviously change like youtube in general and like what they decide to push to audiences because like sometimes youtube is so freaking weird like my most viewed video is the video that i hate the most and i hate that and so like just like the videos that youtube tries to push i don't understand their algorithm sometimes but if i had to do with like booktube in general and like the people's reaction and like taste when it comes to booktube i think i might say like letting people like le letting it be okay for people to read the summary of a book i know people hate that sometimes of people just grabbing a book reading the back and reading it for y'all to know the summary because they don't know the summary themselves i don't know i know people have their tastes and there's nothing wrong with that i know people like what they want to like but to click off of somebody's video simply because they're reading the summary I don't know, it kind of like hurts my feelings a little bit because for people like me who have brain fog and memory issues, like I have to read the back of a book because I don't remember anything from it because of my disability and chronic illness. I don't remember a lot because of that. And so like, it just makes me feel bad about myself when people click off the video because I'm reading the back of a book. And I get that people have preferences and like, I don't hate anybody for doing that obviously, but it just like, hurts my feelings a little bit um because like I can't help it I can't remember anything so like that's like one thing <laughs> that I'd say but I get if that's not your thing and you just like fast forward a little bit little chunk of where I'm reading the summary because you don't want to be spoiled because sometimes the summary can feel like you're spoiling the book you just jump a little bit in the video to get to the next one I totally get that and that doesn't hurt my feelings at all it's those who like decide like not to watch the video in general because they're like oh, this girl's reading the entire summary of the book let's click off this video like I I can't remember like anything so please don't hate me for it but I wouldn't change really anything in general um because I feel like it's a great community overall booktube is so yeah next question is what is your least favorite slash favorite videos to film i would say favorite i've already talked about like gushing over my favorite authors but if i were to pick like another one i do like tutorial style videos i have a few on my channel i did like um how to find free ebooks i loved filming that and then also like how to make a youtube thumbnail i loved filming that too like i love teaching people i'm in school to be a teacher i love teaching people things <laughs> So I don't know, those are my favorite as well. And then for least favorite, I would definitely say TBR videos. Like I just said before, like like I don't know a lot about a book if I haven't read it yet. And even if I read the back of the book before, I have really bad memory loss and memory issues and brain fog. And so for TBR videos, I just feel like lost and don't know how to talk about books and TBR videos because I haven't read them yet and I don't know anything about them and I normally read the back of the book and I know that that's not everyone's favorite thing to, to, to watch from me and so they don't get a lot of views and so they're not necessarily my favorite video to film and so that's also why I haven't filmed any in, in like 2022 literally at all so. Caitlin asked me what are your favorite types of videos to film? Again we get this question so thank you for asking Caitlin. I'm already talking about that again but another one I guess I want to add on to that is I love trope videos making trope videos too I think it's so fun because I get to gush about some of my favorite books and the tropes that I love next question is what was your first historical romance that made you love the genre this was an amazing question and I had to go back and like like go back in my brain and think about it I'm like what is the first one you remember loving it's never seduced a scot by my banks this book made me fall in love with historical romances I'm pretty sure I've read a few historicals before this point but like this is the first one that I feel like I truly 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 fell in love with like Graham and Evelyn in here are just beautiful their romance is amazing they are soulmates for forever and this romance was just so stinking good. Brie, hi Brie. She asked me, what are some things you hope people learn from you when you share about your chronic illness and what have you learned by doing so? This is a great question, Brie. When it comes to people watching my videos and like learning about me and my chronic illness and disability, I really want them to be educated in a sense because not a lot of people know about chronic illnesses in general, even medical professionals do not know a lot about chronic illnesses. My PCP, my general care practitioner, literally knows nothing about my chronic illness, which I love her for my other things. She knows nothing about my chronic illness whatsoever. It's like, I don't blame her or hate her for that. It's just like, people are not educated enough, you know? And there are way more people out there who are chronically ill than you might think, you know? And some people choose not to show share that, like me. Like, I am totally fine with sharing that to the world some people aren't so there's some people probably that you know of that have chronic illnesses that just like 
choose not to share it and that's okay. I want people to learn and be more compassionate and not be so quick to judge, I feel like. Cause before I found out about my chronic illness, I was like, I was a person who did this. I would see somebody get out of a car who was in a handicapped spot, who did not have a mobility aid of some sort. And I'd get kind of like ticked off. I'm like, why are they sit? Why are they, why are they parking there? They're not disabled. After going through everything that I had gone through since I was 17, like 17 and onward, I realized like that is a horrible mindset to have. And like, I was just ignorant and didn't know that there are other people out there now like me who do not look sick on the outside and can be, and we shouldn't judge somebody because they don't physically look disabled on the outside that they should not be accommodated to the same way as physically disabled people, if you know what I'm saying. For learning about myself, um, what I've learned about myself is it's okay to be vulnerable. Um, like at the beginning of my booktube journey, I just wanted to be happy, go lucky, smiling all the time. That's like what my vibe wanted to, like I wanted my vibe to be like that, like the happy channel that people can go to that won't be talking about sad things or just like somewhere someone can escape to to be happy. That's what I wanted it to be when like my life is not happy 100% or even 50% of the time and so I feel like it just showed me this whole experience that I've gone through like it's okay to be vulnerable it's okay to cry it's okay to lean on other people and also by talking about my chronic illness I learned that I'm not alone that's one positive thing coming out of this experience about me talking about what I've gone through is there are so many people even in our little booktube world romance booktube world that have chronic illnesses too that I can relate to and people who relate to me and I never would have thought about that before I shared my journey on here like I I had no idea a couple years ago I came out with my chronic illness journey video on my booktube channel and I talked about chronic illness representation in books and everything and like there were so many people who messaged me after that video talking about their stories and telling them how much the video meant to them and how they related to me and like they don't normally see that on booktube i was shocked i was like there are so many people out there that are like me that i can be friends with and that i can connect to and like some of my closest friends today on booktube like share a similar journey with me in that sense so it just showed me that i'm not alone and that's like a like a huge 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 thing that's come out of me talking about everything. Chloe asked me, what has been the biggest lesson you've learned in your time on booktube? Honestly, friendships, that friendships can come from anywhere. I first started my channel back in 2017 to make friends online, but like I'd never done it before. I'd never really made a friend online before. So I was nervous and I was like, I don't know. I don't think this can happen. Now, the majority of my friends are online. The majority of my friends are on booktube. So like, it just shows that book friends can come from anywhere. Friends, friends can be all over the world. And then another big lesson that I've learned is like, not to be ashamed of what I love to read. Like I was always a person who loved to read the romance parts of a book, even when I was par no, par even when, even when I was predominantly a YA reader, I would specifically only read the books really for the romance parts. And then I started learning about romance books and love romance books in general. And that's my favorite thing to read now. So booktube has kind of like helped me find my favorite genre and helped me find the books that I love. And it's showed me not to be ashamed of the books that you love. There's nothing wrong with loving a book with a shirtless man on the cover. Like there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Tori asked me, what is your favorite video to film? I already mentioned this before, but thank you so much Tori for asking me this question. It's a great question. So I'll just say like my favorite video to film in general is probably the IPB one. That one was so fun to film to just gush, 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 gush about my favorite author, Ruby Dixon. Heather asked me a few questions. So first she asked me, um, what book gives you radiance vibes? Definitely, I Married a Lizard Man by Regine Abel. Um, this is like a marriage of convenience where they're friends first and it grows into something more. I loved it, it's an alien romance. Don't let the cup fool you, this book is really good, okay? And then another book that also gives me Radiance vibes that you wouldn't like think is like The Winter King by C.L. Wilson, but like flipped a little bit because Radiance is friends to lovers, whereas this one is enemies to lovers, but a lot of the same things that happen in Radiance happen in here. Like the heroine and the hero getting an arranged marriage, they're both royalty. Um, 
they both are kind of like have to get to know each other because they're married now and once they get to know each other they start to fall in love whereas this one starts as enemies and then it grows into lovers the other one is friends to lovers but i feel like this book gives a lot of radiant vibes too it's also fantasy romance so she also asked me what is the yummiest product slash snack you've found on your diet so if you don't know i'm on a gluten-free diet because of my celiac disease i was diagnosed when i was seven if you are wanting to find a really good brand for gluten-free products i would say pamela's brand they make like a great knockoff of a fig newton oh my gosh so good um their pancake mix is my favorite thing ever for pancakes and making pancakes and waffles and all that stuff um their brownie mix is amazing too like pamela's baking and cooking stuff is really good they're shortbread oh my gosh pamela's shortbread cookies <gasps> so good they don't sell them in stores anymore and i'm so sad like whenever we come across them i literally die inside because i'm so happy <laughs> It's been a very long time since I've seen any of Pamela's shortbread cookies in stores, so. And then when it comes to like meals and everything, I love a good cauliflower crust. Cauliflower crust tastes nothing like cauliflower. Even if I wasn't gluten-free, I don't think I'd go back to like regular pizzas. I think I'd want like gluten-free pizzas. Like looking at a regular pizza, the crust looks gross to me. It looks thick and gross and just, giant i'm like why eat that when you think this like skinny crust of a pizza like that sounds way more appealing to me i don't like a bready crust like regular pizzas like that does not appeal to me so so my favorite pizza crust to use for gluten for pizza that is absolutely amazing is the green giant cauliflower crust it doesn't taste like cauliflower whatsoever it just tastes like a pizza crust, a thin crust pizza. I'm a cheese pizza kind of girl. So I'll get some marinara sauce <laughs> and I'll just dump it on the crust and then sprinkle some mozzarella cheese on there. And it's so good. It's one of my favorite meals to make. Um, and then she also asked me, what trope is your absolute favorite? And then the little message she sent after was so sweet. Thank you so much, Heather. My trope, I would definitely say I love friends to lovers. I do. I'm a friends to lovers girl just because that's the kind of romance I'd want in real life. I do not want an alpha hero man controlling me nope i love reading about them they're fun to read about don't want that in real life i love friends to lovers in real life and i also i love like the savior trope where like kind of like the knight in shining armor who rescues the princess from the tower like i love that okay i love that <laughs> then aspasia asked me what are some of your favorite memories since joining booktube other than obviously meeting my friends in person i'd say like the opportunities that i've had to talk to my favorite authors so Brittany c cherry like talks we talk sometimes and it's so cool um after like my tiktok happened with her book and everything like i've been able to talk to my favorite author which is crazy that whole experience was crazy to me and then i also got to talk to tiffany and robert like the author duo of tiffany roberts then morgan asked me what are your buzzwords that make you instantly want to read a book this is a great question one bed i love the one bed trope um anything with disability rep makes it higher on my tbr for me because I, I love that representation a lot in books. Captor captive, when I hear about that, where like the heroine falls for her captor. And then um, caretaking, I'm a big caretaking lover. Like I love reading caretaking scenes in books so much. Then Ashton asked, what's a book series or author who doesn't get enough hype slash reviews that you wish more people would read? This is a great question. For a book, I would say Nerdgasm by Kimberly Reese. Like I just cannot shut up about this book. It is so stinking cute. This is a college romance. He's a TA. She's one of the students in the class he's a TA for. And she kind of like pursues him. We have an innocent wink wink hero. He's just so cute. I love him so much. And I love this book because it kind of like is different from romance as we see nowadays where the physical department is like rushed and prioritized and don't get me wrong I love those kinds of books and like they're some of my favorite romance books but this one kind of like goes against the mold of where like they go slow and then they slowly get closer and closer and closer to like the big bang if that makes sense so like they go slow in the physical department and i loved reading about that like because it's so different than what we normally read about in romances for series i would say the moon series by lisa kessler the first one being moonlight this is a shifter romance series that like no one has read but me i read them one of my first years on booktube and so i don't know if they'd like hold up but i i own two physically these are the last two in the series she very kindly like sent them to me um lisa kessler did and so this is one of, this is my favorite in the series this is um new moon so this series is basically about like shifters falling in love finding their mates so like the first one moonlight 
is about a werewolf shifter finding out that his mate is a panther shifter and uh, panther shifters and werewolf shifters are sworn enemies, but they're mates and they gotta figure all this out. So um, I love this series. No one's talked about it and they're really fun. And then underhyped author I would say is Lila Faye. I love her monster romances. I'm only, I think I only have to read one more by her and then I'm done with all of her backlist. They're just so, some of them are funny. Like she wrote, she's the one who wrote Jack, but like her orc trilogy is really good. The last one I have to read is the last book in this trilogy to say that I've read all of her backlist. But like, if you want a good monster loving, read Lila Fay. she's really fun. The next question is, have you ever thought about writing a book? If so, what tropes would you use? Yes, I thought about writing a book um, in college, like my sophomore year. I like drafted kind of like one out a little bit. My only issue with writing books is I never know how they're going to end. Like I don't, I don't like writing about conflicts. I don't like writing about third act breakups. And so like, I'm like, how would this book end? I have thought about writing one. I have like notes on my iPad and phone about the book that I would write one day. And it would have disability rep with caretaking and it would be friends to lovers. That's like the three things I would mention. I've wanted to write it. I just like, I don't know how. <laughs> I think it's just hard for me because I'm not, I don't have a writing degree or I'm not a skill, like, like you know, like I've always dreamt of being a writer, even in like middle school and high school. That's what I wanted to do with my life, but I just don't feel qualified. <laughs> Next question is, what is your favorite enemies to lovers romance book? I would definitely say A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane. This one is so good. It's a fantasy romance where the two of them get married to one another even though they hate each other and it is so good. It is so good. I love this one so much. If you've not read this one yet, please do. There's three questions on this next one. Okay, first one is how is school going? Um, school's going okay. Um, I've gotten my three certificates that I needed um, in the semester that I've taken off, which is good. Um, I passed those all in the first try, which I'm very happy about because unfortunately some people don't pass on the first try and that can be very stressful um and so i'm all set and ready and enrolled to resume my senior year in fall of 2022 um, i'm going to be going back moving back on august 20th um, and classes start four days later i have someone i'm subleasing from um, i'm trying to figure out how to transport myself to school because i can't walk that far anymore to campus and yeah i've been talking to my future professors for next semester, trying to prepare them about me and everything. And I'm nervous. Um, number one, there's a few reasons why I'm nervous, but like the like all of the people in my classes have been in classes together for the past semester. Um, so I'm kind of like new here. And so all these people know each other and I don't, so I'll be new. Also, they'll have all of the knowledge they learned last semester. And it, for me, would be a whole year since I've been in school. Um, and so I just hope that it doesn't negatively affect my GPA in any way because I really would love to keep my 4.0 by the end of the year. So I'm excited to go back and finish this dang degree I'm ready to be done with, but I'm really nervous and scared because I don't know how school will be different now being a disabled person. Um, so we'll see, but thank you for asking. They also asked your favorite subgenre of romance. I would say, um, alien romance for sure i love alien romance i will pick up all of them till the day i die i love alien romances um and then favorite audiobook i have a few okay um first we have the love line series by carva stone these are audible plus books if you have an audible account you can listen to these for free they're so good there's like a full cast of narrators there's like background noises it is so good um i love them so much they're just like cute fun romances and then i also have been loving elisa braden's audiobooks like the narrators for those are amazing they're so good um they're like highlander romances so like the narrator is so good at all the accents that she does and then with ya i need to mention this one because it's so good these broken stars by amy kaufman and megan spooner this is one of the first audiobooks that I listened to and I have never stopped thinking about it because it's so good. If you want a good YA sci-fi romance, this is definitely one to pick up. It is so good and the audiobook is amazing. The next question I have is who is an author 
that you've been highly anticipating and why. So I kind of like interpreted this question two different ways. So one is one that I haven't read yet that I'm anticipating. And another way I interpret it, it as is an author you are always highly anticipating um, no matter what their book is. So one that I haven't read yet that I'm anticipating is Lily Lanoff. She's the one who wrote One to One for All, which is the YA book um, with a um, character who has pots as a three musketeer, a musketeer. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that because um, it's own voices and I have pots and so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and I'm loving, I'm gonna really look forward to reading about Lily Lanoff's writing and everything. And then an author that I love that I'm always anticipating their books is Chloe Lise. I love her books. I love her writing. So I'm always anticipating her books. Next question is what is a book that is your all time favorite? I have a few, obviously. <laughs> We have Radiance. I love this one. I've already gushed about this one. And then y'all might not know because I don't talk about it a lot, but I'm a classics gal. I love classics that like I feel like was my first love for romance was the amazing romances and classic books. So Little Women is one of my favorite books of all time. I love this book so much. The romance in here, the characters, it is just so good. And then I also love Jane Eyre. I love this book. Mr. Rochester was my first morally gray hero that I ever read about and it sparked me to love more, morally gray heroes. I love him. <laughs> Next is what is your favorite video that you filmed? Um, I've kind of already mentioned that. I love my IPB one that I filmed, but another one, if I can mention, are all of my Sarah J Mass related videos. So I would say my favorite one would be me reading Kingdom of Ash for the first time. That book. <laughs> wrecked me and you can see on camera it wrecking me and it's just a very fun memory of a video that i have next question is what kind of cover elements draw your eye for picking up a book this is a great question um i would say having a disabled person on the cover always makes me very intrigued because you rarely see that on book covers and so it immediately makes me want to pick up the book even more because it shows that the author really cares about representation so like um not my type of evie mitchell has this on the cover. I love when that's on the cover so much because it just shows that the author really cares. And then I also love a good clinch cover, like covers like these for the couples embracing. One of them might be topless. I love those kinds of covers, especially with historicals. And then I love florals. I love any floral design. So if there's pretty flowers on the cover, I'll snatch it up. Next question is, what was your favorite video you've made these past five years? I've already mentioned that, but another one that I'll touch on really fast is my chronic illness journey video. Um, I just loved filming that and talking about my journey and everything and talking about some of my favorite books that have chronic illness representation in it. I love it. Next question is, um, how do you recommend aspiring booktubers to get started? And what was the thing you struggled with when you started. I kind of already touched on this, but like I really recommend making friends. Um, that'll be like your main thing is commenting on other creators' videos, making friends with them, connecting with them. And then I also recommend if you're like getting started is to plan ahead. Um, I really don't recommend just filming one video, editing it and posting it. And that's how you plan out, your, like film your content. I really recommend planning it out so it's you're not as stressed about it. Um, you can like set specific uh, posting days because you'll have that consistency on your channel. So like I always make sure to post a video every single Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. And so that's constant for me. And so I have to plan ahead of time. I made a, um, a video planning schedule for myself. Like this is the videos I want filmed, edited and uploaded by these days because I love doing that. I love planning. So I really recommend like planning ahead of time of what content you want to make and not just filming one video, editing it, posting it, and go on to the next one and do that all over again. I recommend bulk filming. I recommend doing things all at once because it's a way easier. Well, at least for me, I know everyone's different. Uh, something I struggled with, um, obviously the big one is I started to learn not to let the numbers get to me because like for the longest time, I was so stuck under 1K. I was so stuck under 1K um, and it just made me feel bad. And I was like, there's nothing to feel, now looking back, I'm like, there's nothing to feel bad about. You were just learning what kind of videos you really wanted to make. So they weren't the best thing ever. And that's okay. Cause you were learning and you were growing. And also if you have under 1K, that doesn't mean you have bad videos. It just means the right people haven't found your channel yet. So you just have to wait, wait for the right people to find your channel. And that's how you make friends. You make friends and comment on other people who have the same vibe or same book love as you and hopefully they will love your channel too and you'll be friends and you can collaborate on things and all that jazz. Something I struggled with again is finding my little nook of 
booktube that I wanted. I recommend kind of like finding a little nook, whether it's fantasy booktube, romance booktube, sci-fi booktube, whatever you want to call it. Like, I feel like finding a little nook is like good because then you can find friends. So I struggled with that at the beginning because I feel like it was all over the place. So yeah. <laughs> Next, someone asked if you could read and experience any book again for the first time, what would you choose? Other than Radiance, again, like I talked about, um, I'd probably say any Sarah J Maas book because her books literally the twists and turns in her books leave me reeling and it's so fun to read her books and read them for the first time. Next, someone asked, what are your top three favorite tropes? Uh, friends to lovers. I love a good kidnapping trope where like they fall in love with their kidnapper. I love that. Um, and then I also adore and love where the hero falls first. I'm a big sucker for it. Next is how has reading books in such a public way on booktube changed how you read books? Oh, this is a very interesting question. So I actually have to be more cautious about what I choose to read and talk about on booktube. I cannot talk about and read some of the books that some of my friends recommend because of the cover or the title or a curse word in the title. Other things because I'm gonna be a teacher. Hopefully we'll see if my disability will let me. <laughs> we'll see if my body will let me be a teacher based on what's happened to me. But Hopefully I'll be a teacher in some sort and I'll be working with children and unfortunately making videos like that with words and phrases and reading books about those things, um, more of the taboo nature might bite me in the butt later on in my career and I really don't want to do that and it sucks to think that that would happen because like I wish people would separate being a teacher and being something else like having your own personal life but sometimes that just doesn't happen so I, would, I do have to be cautious after being on booktube, I have to really be cautious about what I choose to put online now. And then in a positive way, how it's affected my reading um, is just like my way of connecting. Cause like normally when I was like reading books before I was on booktube, I just like gush about it to my friends who didn't read. And they'd like be so annoyed that I just gushed about this book. I'm like, I gotta talk to somebody about it. And so now after being on booktube, I have friends that actually read the same books as me and we can gush to each other and it's so fun. Especially ask me some more questions. What is one of your favorite books that you've read because of booktube? I would say Always Only You by Chloe Lee. It's one of my favorite books of all time. Tori recommended it to me. Um, and it's it's just, it's so good. It's one of my favorite books of all time. She then asked, uh, what's one book you would recommend to everyone? I would say Royally Matched by Emma Chase because it is just so good. The romance in here is amazing and it's a contemporary romance. I know that's kind of like the majority of what romance readers read is contemporary. So I feel like this is a contemporary that everyone loves, but you gotta read book one before you get to this. So I'd say maybe this whole series in general is something that I think everyone should read. And then she also asked me what's a book you'd read again for the first time. I would probably say again, The Magic, just because I think if I read it again for the first time, I might have a differing opinion because this is not my favorite historical romance. Like many of my friends, I think I gave this a four or 4.5. And like, I think I was just in a really bad mood when I first read it. Um, and it's kind of like slumpy. And so kind of like affected the way that I felt about the book. So I feel like I'd want to read it again to maybe change my rating. And then lastly, she asked if you could pick one book character to be your soulmate, who would it be? Ren Bergman. I want Ren Berg. I want Ren Bergman in real life, please, please, please. And then I also love Graham. I love him so stinking much. I wish, I wish it was real. Danny, my friend Danny, um, asked me what has surprised you the most so far in your booktube journey. I would say how happy it's made me. I didn't like assume booktube would make me this happy. I just thought, oh, this could be a fun hobby to just do and do when I'm bored or whatever. But no, it's made me really happy. I didn't expect it to make me this happy. Um, and it's kind of also surprisingly been like a lifeline for me since I've been really sick like it's kind of like been my saving grace if I didn't have booktube I would be and all the friends that I've made from booktube I would be way worse for wear because of what's happened to me recently and so I feel like I'm just surprised on how much booktube means to me now I didn't expect for that to happen honestly Larissa asked um have you noticed in the five years of booktube that you're reading haste slash habits have changed or stayed the same. I think I mentioned my reading tastes have changed. I used to be a YA reader. 
I used to be a YA reader really and that was what my booktube channel was really all about. And then when it comes to like habits, like I've learned since being on booktube not to be ashamed over what I read. Personally, I don't vibe with people who don't read romance books simply because there's a shirtless man on the cover or a couple, a real life couple on the cover. I don't vibe well with people who only read romance books because the cover is pretty and illustrated. Like a book is more than just what the cover is. And I've learned that now. I've learned not to be ashamed over what I'm reading. I've learned to be loud and proud about the books that I love. And some of them have shirtless people on the cover. And that's amazing. Next, someone asked me, what are some of your favorite historical romance step backs that I own? There are a bunch. So let me see on this side at least. Um, ooh, I love this one. I love that one. <laughs> it's so cute. This is the book, by the way. That one is so good. I love it. I also love this one. My friend Tori gave it to me for Christmas. It is really pretty. And then another one I love from this side, at least. I don't want to get up and walk to the other side of my historical collection, but this one is really pretty too. I love a good two page step back. A bunch of my two page ones are on the opposite side though. Next is, is there a genre slash author you wished you'd like to get into, but can't seem to? For genre, I'd say like, mystery or suspense romances are not my thing. I wish I liked them, but I just, I don't. I don't know what it is. They give me a big ick. I don't want to read them. Also road trip romances in contemporary settings, literally get those books away from me as fast as possible. I love road trip romances and historicals and fantasy romances, but in a contemporary, no. They're so boring to me. I hate them. <laughs> um, I wish I could like them. I just don't. I don't know why I like them more in historicals and um, fantasy. It's just, it is the way that it is. And then with author, I would say, um, I wish I'd love Casey McQuiston, but I don't. It's like, I just don't vibe with their writing at all. Like I DNF'd Red, White, and Royal Blue because it was so boring. So next is what is your favorite booktube memory? Um, I've talked about a few of them, but one that I haven't mentioned yet was like just the support that I've got ten um, since I've been really sick. It makes me want to cry on how, um, amazing like a book community can be to to be there for somebody in a time of need i feel like that's something i'm always gonna look back on very fondly and lastly someone asked me what kind of music do i listen to <laughs> this might <laughs> this might upset people i don't know i love taylor swift's music i am a swifty to the day i die I love her music. I've been a fan of her since I was very young. I went to her concert um, in the fifth grade and haven't stopped loving her. I love all of her music, especially her new folky ones. Like I, I love it. I love how she's doing and I just love her music and I always will. And I am a diehard fan. And so that's the majority of what I listen to. Ooh, my voice hurts. <laughs> Thank you all so much for commenting all of those questions and saying congratulations on all of the comments. I really appreciate it. So let's get to what y'all are all here for, which is the giveaway winner. So let me screen record really fast on my iPad. Okay, we're gonna pull up the spinning wheel. And I have everybody who commented, all those comments are all on here. So let's, let's spin the wheel, shall we? This is the winner, woo woo. So whenever this video comes out, I will be contacting you, DMing you to let you know that you have won my giveaway. I'll be um, asking what your Amazon wish list is and sending you a book and some of my bookmarks. So congratulations on winning. Thank you all so much again for answering all of these questions. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for five years on BookTube and for making these five years amazing. I love you so, so much. And thank you all so, so much for watching. Bye y'all. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.